In part one of the series, I drove a thousand kilometres from Darwin to King Ash Bay in the Gulf of Carpentaria. I caught up with Ash and Bullfrog and spent about 10 hours watching this brisket cook in the smoker. After getting my sea legs, the next day we headed upstream in the punt and bush bashed our way up over a rock bar to our favourite fishing spot. Now that we're all caught up, we join part two mid-morning on day four, packing the essentials into the boat. Is that the rum, is it? Yeah. <laughs> Coconut I picked from my uh, front yard at home. <laughs> we'll see you later on. <laughs> oh, gosh. Wilson! Well, the plan for this afternoon is to head down the river, down to the Davies Channel. We're gonna go visit the crabbers, maybe spend the night there, cook up a big feed, and do some fishing, hopefully some night fishing. Alrighty, boat's free, we're good to go boys. for today. <laughs> All right, so there's a few crabber shacks down here in the Davies Channel. Professional crabbers that go out crabbing for a living. No one home at the moment, obviously working. We uh, come to visit. Let's maybe unload some stuff and then go for a look out the front. Yep, let's do it, mate. I mean, Where can froggy? Copy that. Copy that. Oh, look at this. A few tarps on the roof, fridge and freezers, comfortable place to sleep. Look at that little kitchen and everything. I think that's the full tour of the whole place. So where we sleep? So that's my swag. So where, where are we? We're sleeping down the back, in the bedroom. Oh, it only got me in the face. <laughs> oh, you got the hook. Look at this. <laughs> Me and Bullfrog, we bring swags, right? <laughs> Ash brings a single bed. Oh, man. <laughs> look at this, he probably can't hear him. He's yelling out from down the end saying, oh, look, I've got brand new sheets, brand new quilt. <laughs> look at it. He's full committed. A bit of a donation to the camp, eh? You're a mother Teresa, mate. Well, you see the hospital box. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> oh, man. I'll get the drone up later on when the sun's setting and you'll see how ridiculous this is where we're camping tonight. Soon after we've made ourselves at home, Alex and Mullet arrive back at camp after working their crab pots for the day. We get to check out their catch a little later on, but for now, I jump in with Alex. There's a massive groper that hangs around every time he washes his boat out. How you going, man? We've already made ourselves at home. Yeah, all good, no problem. Okay, I'll fix the rig, wash the boat down. I'll get you to come with me if you want some footage to the groper. Yeah, right, yeah. Yeah, because he, he, like, every time I wash my boat in it, I feed him. Mullet's not far away, he's, he's just around the corner there. Oh, yeah. Crab boat? Hey, Poochie! Hey, just watch that part there. Oh, don't sit on that, yeah. sorry, mate. Hey, Poochie! All right, I'm now on the crab boat. Old Mad Mullet over there, he's just arrived home. Hey Pichi! Hey Jesse! There's this big groper that is quite friendly that comes in real close. We've seen him a few times. Oh man! He must be six feet. I'm six foot three. Oh. Okay, this camera goes underwater. We're gonna try and get him in close and hopefully get some good footage. We've got cameras too, they get cameras Oh yeah. 
Mullet had a small shark that drowned in one of his crab pots today. He came up with a plan to lure the groper in by tying a rope around the shark and the other end around his wrist. That's why I saved that back um, flipper for the, the tail of that. Oh, <laughs> and that was the last we saw of the Grover for the day. That was a great idea putting that thing on a rope, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mullet gives us a behind the scenes tour of the crab shack, starting with the crab room. Holy f***ing. Stacked up nice and neat, ready for market. Yeah, right, yeah. So, so you'll take them in town this Sunday and then they'll be yeah, live they'll... crabs in, in restaurants in Melbourne yep. two days later or something. Yep, within like Tuesday, Wednesday, What's that's it. Coconut? Unreal. Yeah. Next, he takes us out the back for a history lesson. You take a picture of heaps of like those cockle shells up here. There are big piles of shells that are all concentrated in one area. This was obviously a spot that was chosen to sit and have a feed by generations of indigenous people. There's a name for these, Ash, what is it? Cockles. Yeah, but like a, a pile of these, I'm sure there's like a... Middens. Shell middens can be found in coastal locations across Australia. They're not uncommon, but it's certainly not something you see every day. A thousand years ago, indigenous people were here. And they sat here eating the meat out of these shells. There's a few of those little, uh, what do you call them? Like those cone shells and that here too? Yeah, long bomb. Long bombs, this one. yeah. There's long bomb. Them too, yeah. yeah. Long bomb. Yeah. Big mud. Big the mud, mud wobber. What'd you call it? A... Mindy wobber. Mindy wobber. Yeah, they live in the mud. And at high tide, when the tide comes in, they feed off all the mud and that. Yeah, you find them everywhere in the mangroves. Once you look for them, once you find one, you'll see it heaps every time. Oh, wow. Yeah, massive, like a big muscle. Oh. Yeah, good feed for them. We head back into camp. It's yeah, a two course yeah. dinner tonight. Mullet is getting the fire started to cook some crab on the camp oven later on, while Alex is creating a feast of pork and rice in the kitchen. What's going on, Chefy? Pork, dude. Pork night. Sick pork. Of, I'm sick of eating bloody fish and crab, eh? <laughs> <laughs> that smells incredible. Where did you actually learn to cook? My mommy. Yeah, rightio. Cool for mullet, you know. So mum gave me mullet, and I rocked with mullet for about seven years, and that was my nickname going through. So your mum, your mum gave you the nickname mullet or just no, the haircut? Just gave me the haircut, you know, like, yeah. <laughs> That's what I told Alex, like, if I shave and I rock the mullet again, I'll, I'll suit it, you know, like. Be, be like a big one, you know, be like a bum sap, you know, like down here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I can tell by my voice that I've already had way too much beer. So better get that drone up for a look around before we head back down to the boats for some fishing and crabs. Point the camera, point the camera. <laughs> Alex is saying I hope it's catfish. What do you got? Another cod. Oh, Not bad. As far as the creek goes, a nice little cod, eh? Heaps of people would keep that. Oh, yeah. Nothing wrong with that, eh? Good, mate. Black spot nice. cod. Nice little fish, eh? Hell yeah. The boat. Not bad. Considering the beer, buddy. Doing nothing, basically. <laughs> That's unbelievable. Okay, so you caught that, and here we are at camp. Yep. Four frogs are sitting there drinking beer. These boys are oh, both working their crab. asses off. Yeah, tying yeah. up crab, you know. <laughs> Mullet tying up crab. Alex over there tying up crab. 
having fun. And Ashley absolutely smashing it with the cod off the back of the boat. Oh man, I have not even had one cast. Queen, you And he's already hooked up to another one. What do we got? Cod. <laughs> oh, you're joking. No. Is that one bigger? That's a little bit bigger. It's a, it's a gold spot, it's two a different species. <laughs> Living the dream. Ash has been absolutely slaying the cod since we got here. He yeah, even started insisting we call him the cod father. Black spot. Oh, he is too, sorry. Fading light, mate, you know? Yeah, yeah, fading light, understandable. Another black spot, two and two casts. Bloody beautiful. Look at this, man. They are incredibly looking fish. He smashed it. He did smash it. Nice little cod, Ashley. Ash is flicking lures over this side of the boat. Yeah, he's getting the mix on, on his boat. And then uh, I'm standing in uh, Mullet's boat. Yep. Mixing it up. <laughs> and then uh, Alex is over there doing a wee on his boat. <laughs> doing a wee wee. Doing wee wee. He is processing crabs, though. Yeah. Wait till you see the footage of how fast he can time. It was really interesting seeing how much work was involved for these professional crabbers. Physically catching the crabs is just half the job. They need to be measured, tested, tied and sorted. Well, what do I mean by tested? In this time lapse, you can see Alex throwing the odd crab off the side. These are the crabs that are empty. A little later on, Mullet's going to explain more about that one. talking some nonsense to the camera when Ash, um, I mean, the cod father, hooks onto the biggest fish of the day. Yep. Oh, Ash is on. Look at that, I was filming too. Oh, good fish. Oh, porn, huh? Oh, no, you got no hope of keeping that. Ash, hold him. No, turn him. You turned him. Turned him. That's the biggest oh, bend in that rod I've seen today. That's a nice oh, yeah. fish. Must have trimmed your motor up. Get a whole crop one, eh? Oh, wow. Head shake. Oh, it could be a meter here. <laughs> <laughs> oh. come on, come on. Ash, come on. Play him out. Right, yeah, hold up, hold up, hold up. I'm yeah. trying to ride up. <laughs> giving him grief. Bloody oath. You want your motors up Big or what? Oh, oh, sh. You're joking. Where's your lip Big grips? God. Where's your lip grip there? <laughs> Hold up. Oh, good God. Yes. You got him? Yes. Holy dude. <laughs> Woohoo. Easy thank go. The mother, thank the mother for the rabbit. Yeah, well, it did not <laughs> fight like a god, hey. That, it, it went. No, I, I thought it could have been a good barra, but. <laughs> oh, nice God. Yes. Hey, what about the poor nice boys spot. working here? Hey, <laughs> poor boys working in the yeah, background. Come on now. These guys still tying crab over here. Yeah. If you're this far into the video, I'd love you to hit that thumbs up button. If this fish isn't worth a like, then I'm not sure what is. And quick side topic, this isn't even the biggest cod that he catches on the trip. But you're gonna have to wait till part three or four for that one. Not wanting to be outfished in his own front yard, Mullet takes a break from tying crabs and shows us how easy it is to catch oh. a barramundi. The bad trimby! F off, Mullet! Oh, oh, stop it. Yes! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yes! Oh, that's Thank you, crazy. Lord! Oh, yeah! Bring it up! Bring it in the boat! Yeah, please. Jesse, back! Yep. There's a net. There's oh, you are in. kidding me, are you? Come on. Up. Oh! oh. oh. Yes! Thank <laughs> oh, your mother for stop. the rabbits, eh? Hey? Yes, <laughs> oh, watch her. She might hook herself. No, nah, you're right. Jesse. Oh, yeah, man. <laughs> yeah, cast. No worries. 
That's unreal, man. And look at this, the moon's just popped up. Yep. Just over there. Like a true professional, Mullet celebrates his catch in the classiest way he knows how. Ah, oh, look at that. <laughs> That's him. What a good boy. Thank you very much, hey. Give him a scratch, hey. Oh, good boy. Oh, we love the belly rubs, hey. <laughs> so this crab here, right, we just grabbed him out of the well and we put him upside down here. You can see there's a six pack underneath there. You press on one, you press on two. If that's no good, you know, if it's soft, it's no good. But that crab there has to go back into the wild. He's empty. So what, you categorise these, is that called a B grade or is that like a no, C or well, D? that's pretty much empty, that's no good, we can't keep that because if you leave him in your basket for three or four days he dies because he, he doesn't have enough energy, enough meat to store in there. He's used up all his energy looking for food all through the rock bar or sand bar or wherever he comes from, you know? Yeah, wow. Yeah, no, nah, good crowd, eh? So what's the plan? What do you do with him right now? With him, right, we say good night, have a good swim and we'll see you next time. Oh, 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 that's yeah. unbelievable. It's about 10 p.m. so we're all pretty keen for a feed. So Mullet's gonna put on a few crabs tonight. Mullet's gonna put on a few crabs tonight. We're just gonna boil a few crabs we caught previously today. So I'm just gonna put them into a fresh water. So I'm gonna steam them for about nine minutes. With a couple of good claws here now. Even Alex gave us a bit of a sponsor tonight too. <laughs> so I'll just put them into the hot fresh water. Watch out there. And I'll tuck them in nice and neat, you know. I'll put my lid on top here. And I'll probably give them about oh, at least nine minutes. And yeah, we're in joy. Nine minutes, you reckon? Yep, not even that. Because there is a fair quantity of crabs in there, so I've got to stir them up. So yeah, that should be good. Is a sponsor from Alex, hey? <laughs> Alex is remote yeah. crabbing. Some nice nippers here, so now we just took them out of the water, or just drained the water, so now I'm going to go and put them in the freezer for about, say, five, ten minutes, and chill down to easy get the shell, and yeah, then we'll indulge. We'll see how they go. Yo, beauty. Yo. Have a look. Go on, beer. Go on, there. Yeah. Go on, there. Go on, there. I'm gonna give you a little sneak preview of part three. If you enjoyed part one and two, there's a really good chance you're gonna love part three. We start off with some fishing in some sheltered water around the islands before making our way out to Waiibi Fishing and Wilderness Lodge on North Island. We spend a couple of nights out there with the whole crew. You know what to do, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on part three.